Amen. Amen. Yes, give Jesus a clap of praise. Can do better than that. You can do better than that. Our God is a faithful. Our God is a just God. Amen. How are we doing with our fasting? Are we doing good with our fasting and prayers? Are we doing good with our fasting and prayers? Please take a seat, please. Are we doing good with our fasting and prayers? Amen. God is a faithful God. You know, Jesus Christ is Lord. This fasting and prayers is so good. And I believe before we finish our fasting and prayers, we're going to have, by God's special grace, we're going to have another picture of this church. You're going to be amazed. Hallelujah. It gives me joy. It gives me joy to see what God is doing. What God is doing. God is doing a very great thing. God is working. And God is touching people's hearts. God is touching people individually by himself. God is raising people individually by himself to do his work because it is the work of God. It is the work of God. Our God is faithful. Our God is just. So you know we do have our team, a new team every month. But because this is our fasting month, we started from January. So we're going to continue the theme of fasting and prayers. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Fasting and prayers. Fasting and prayers. So please, I'm very pleased as you are fasting, as you are praying. Just remember. Remember the building of the church because it's going fast. And God is taking control. And pray that God will touch many lives as well, like this very wonderful donor. It's a very great one. So that we're going to see more of that. Our God is faithful. And you yourself, you know, God wants us, the Bible says, when you are giving, don't give grudgingly. Just give. Give from your heart. If God touches your heart to give, give from your heart. Not grudgingly. If you are waiting for me to, be, to have a um, Connection for the building of the church, I'm not going to do that. And if you are waiting for us to have a building fund, and you know, uh, when we used to go to our church before, we used to have a chat, a building fund. Oh, the building fund has raised up to this amount. It's raised up to this amount. It's a... No. I do not fancy it. Can somebody shout amen? amen? What I fancy is just like this gift we got last week. And that is the gift that's come from the heart, from the heart of the heart. And somebody did because God has touched his heart. God touched their heart. They discussed it as a family. And they said, we're going to give. God touched their heart. And they give. This is the gift that God wants us to give. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. When you are giving, when you are paying your tithes, are you smiling when you are paying your tithe? Are you smiling when you are sowing your seed? Are you cheerful when you are giving your offering? You know, some people, when they want to give, they just, <laughs> they frown their face. Uh, I don't think that God uh, recognized that. What God wants us to do is to be very, very cheerful. If you want to give, you give. If you don't want to give, be happy. Keep your pain. Because it is yours. God gave it to you. So I want us to be very, very cheerful to God. Because come break, come song. The work of God must surely, definitely go on. And I want us to be cheerful when we come to God's presence. Because there is a lot for us to gain from coming to God's presence. Our God is a faithful God. You know, I'm doing a testimony here, and God, um, that was a place I was, you know, going up, and I was climbing this wonderful building, beautiful, beautiful building, and, and I slipped back, and I said, God, why? Why did I just have a, a shaking on it? And God said to me, do more. Help people more. Give more. Can somebody shout amen? 
Let me tell you, when you give, God will bless you. When you give more, God will strengthen you. More especially in this uh, time of fasting and prayer. You give, you pray, and God will bless you. And God will recognize that God will say, Oh, my son, my daughter, you sow seed. I will bless you. And God will definitely do exactly what he said he's going to do. So when you are giving to God, just give smiling. Don't give, you know, frowning your face. Oh, if I don't give now, this happen and whatever happened. Instead of you to go that way, you just keep your money. Our God is faithful. Our God is just. And then when you give, the word of God says, it will be given back to you. And let us understand that when the word of God says it's going to be given back to you, it may not be given back to you the way you think. It may be given back to you. It may be given back to you in a different way. God may help you to, you know, to avoid a danger ahead of you. God may give you more years. God may reward you cash, give you back money. Our God is a faithful God. I always remember there was a time uh, our brother, what our brother called here, saw a seed for her grandma. And after that seed, then we went and prayed for grandma. She was she's 92, 91 years to 92 years. And after that seed that she saw, we went to pray for grandma. And God revealed to me. Grandma leg was shaking. And then we went there. We prayed for grandma. And Paul himself, oh yes. Paul said to me, oh, pastor, look, look, look. I said, that's good. And after that, grandma gave his life to Christ, isn't it? She gave her life to Jesus Christ. Can somebody shout amen? Amen. 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 What, what reward is, better, is bigger than that? She gave her life to Jesus. She wasn't talking before, but we went there praying. And thank God for uh, Sister Adina. She said to me, you know, this opportunity to pray for, for Grandma to give her life to Christ. And then we went there, we prayed, and I remember that I said, yes, this is what you're going to do. Now that she's moving, now that she's shaking. And I said, Grandma, we're going to pray for you to give your life to Christ. Do you want to give your life to Christ? Yes. We prayed for her. And grandma said, yes. She gave her life to Christ. And after that prayer, it didn't take a while. She passes on. And she passes on to glory. Can somebody shout amen? amen. What a wonderful prophet. What a wonderful good thing to give, to sow seed. This is the way God has rewarded her with eternal life. So when you sow seed, and when you give your gift, and when you give uh, your offering, and when you pay your tithe, I tell you, God can avert accident. God can stop evil things coming to happen to you. And that will be the way that God will reward you. You know, the one we know is when we have millions in our account. We say, oh, this, this is the seed that I sow. Yes. But I tell you, life and health and protection is more than money. Because if you have money, you don't have health, you don't have protection, then that money is useless. Imagine, there was someone I know, he's a very rich man, very, very rich man. But all he can do, all he can eat is just to drink milk. His body does not take any food. He can't eat anything that stays in his body. The only thing that he do is just to drink milk. That's all. Morning, afternoon, night. That's all that his body can take. Amen. But he was very rich. He has got billions. He has got cars. He has got aeroplane. He has got a lot of things. But he cannot eat it. He can only drink milk and a sip of milk until he dies. Wow. Let us think about this. The help that God has given to you today to wake up, to come to this place, that is a wonderful gift of God. 
It's a wonderful thing that God has given to us for the fact that we wake up this morning. There are many people that have come and gone. And I tell you, if they should have wake up this morning, they will be very rejoicing. They will be very, very happy. Okay, so this is why I'm saying this is so that we know that when the Bible says, give and it shall be given back to you, good measures, praised and shaken together, shall men give to you. It may not only be cash, but it may be protection, it may be life, it may be healing, it may be deliverance, it may be salvation that will be given back to you in a wonderful way. Whichever way God gives back to you, receive it with joy and bless the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Today, we've got a wonderful message on our fasting and prayers. You know, sometimes some people do not know what they are fasting for. Why are they fasting? What would they be praying when they are fasting? So that is why I am bringing all these topics so that you know what you're going to look onto when you are fasting, when you are praying. Because if you know what you are fasting for, and then if you are praying along the line of your fasting, great things happen. So we we'll fast to overturn every plan of darkness against us. And let me tell you, sometimes the devil has got a secret plan to destroy you, to save you. Just as Jesus Christ said to Apostle Peter, he said, Apostle Peter, the devil has got a plan to save you, to destroy you. But I pray for you that the devil will not succeed. Let me tell you, sometimes we may not know what is there ahead of us. But when we are fasting, we pray and we destroy everything that is ahead of us then you will see the kingdom of darkness, you know, destroyed. Today we're going to take one example of this beautiful fasting. It's going to be the fasting of Esther in the scriptures. I know you've heard about the fasting of Esther. I want us to learn something from there today. And I want us to understand that the power of fasting, the importance of fasting, the effect of fasting, what fasting can do, how fasting can change situation, how fasting can change life, how fasting can, can help you? You know, for some people, when you talk about fasting, not for them. Okay, good for you. Good for you. Some people say, it's not for me. Okay, good for you. But I tell you, fasting and prayer is for everyone. It is for everyone. Every one of us. Our God is faithful. So we can see the great man of God fasting always and praying. And God Himself demanding that we should fast and pray. Can we read Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen, please? Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen. Our God is faithful, and our God is just. Remember our topic today: fasting to overcome. Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen, and it says, "If my people, which are called by my name," If they can humble themselves and pray. He says, if my people put a call by my name, shall humble themselves. The word humble is telling us if they can fast and pray. He said, they can humble themselves and pray and seek my face and come from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. If my people who are called by my name, if they humble themselves and pray, so prayer come first of all, you first humble yourself and second you pray. You humble yourself and then you pray. When you humble yourself, and then you pray. The Bible says, surely God will answer your prayers. If my people, if they can humble themselves, and if they can pray. Shall we read uh, Psalm 35, verse 13, please? 
Psalm 35, verse 13. And he says, that this is King David. And this is how we win his battle. We know that King David win all his battle. A to Z of his battle. He win all his battle. And when he was told, you know what? A young lady was given to her to him to warm him up. That is how victory he is. Because all the shower men. He was old and his body was cold. And a young lady was given to him to sleep with, uh, with him and then it was just to give him a warm. That is how beautiful you know, fasting and prayers can help us to do. The Bible says even in our old age, we will still be bearing fruits and somebody shower amen. So the Bible says, but as for me, <coughs> when they were sick, my bodies were sacred. I humbled my soul with fasting. David say, I humbled my soul with fasting. Fasting humbles your soul. When you are fasting, your soul is humble. Your spirit is humble. Your flesh is humble. Because you are fasting, because there is no much energy in you, physical energy, there is spiritual energy. That is arising from within you. So you humble your soul. That's why the Bible says, if my people which are called by my name, if they can humble themselves, if they can pray. If they can humble themselves, if they can pray, I will hear from heaven. You humble yourself through fasting and prayer. You know, some people that are some great people, some of these people that fight. When they are fasting and then if they see a, a battle coming before uh, coming in, in front of them, they will say, after I finish fasting, I will, I will deal with you. Because when you are fasting, you are very, very humble. So imagine David always, you can see David, David always fasting, praying always in the house of God, three times a day and seven times a day worshiping God. What a great king. And then he win all his battles through humbling, through fasting, and through prayers. So he commits every battle in the hand of God. He commits every day in the hand of God through fasting and prayers. Our God is a faithful, and our God is a just God. And I would like us also to read Psalm 69, verse 10. Psalm 69, verse 10. So when you humble yourself, through fasting and prayers, the Bible says, I will hear your prayer. God is a God that promise. God is a faithful and a just God. Psalm 69 verse 3 says, When I went and just and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. He said, I chastened my soul with fasting. He said, You soul, be humble. You body, be humble. Your spirit, be humble. I chasten my soul with fasting. And verse, and there's Psalm 57, uh, Psalm 57 from verse 1 to 6, please. Psalm 57 from verse 1 to 6. Our God is faithful. Psalm 57 from verse 1 to 6. And the word of God says, and it says, Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me. For my soul trusted in thee, yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that will swallow me up. Meditate. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue are sharp sword. Verse 5. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let thy glory be above all the earth. He said, I lie down among those that have got sharp teeth. I lie down among those that, that want to set me to fire. I lie down among those that want to kill me because he is the king. 
They want to kill him. They want to destroy his life. But through fasting and prayer, David conquered all his enemies. And somebody shout amen. amen. If we read Ezekiel chapter 21 from verse 27, please. Ezekiel chapter 21 from verse 27. And in this Ezekiel chapter 21 from verse 27, the Bible says, And I will overturn. And I will overturn. And I will overturn it again. Until whose own it is. It says, I will overturn. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. And it shall be no more until he comes whose right it is. And I will give it him. When you are fasting, God will overturn at the point of the enemy, overturn it again, and overturn him, and turn again, and overturn every works of darkness, whatever devil plan against you, God will overturn it, and overturn it, and overturn it, and overturn it again. Amen. Can somebody shout amen? amen? That is why you should fast. Because when you are fasting, all your prayer, Father, over overturn. Overturn every plan of the darkness, overturn every plan of the principles and powers, overturn every plan of the, the demonic forces against me. Overturn it, overturn it, overturn it, Father, overturn it, overturn it, because you don't know it all. You don't know it all. David said, I lie down among those that their teeth are out there to, to, to destroy me. But God, I humble my soul with fasting and with prayers. I'm assuring you, you may not know what is who is, you know, your enemy that's around you. Your enemy may be around you, you do not know. You do not know who is your enemy. But God knows your enemy. So when you are praying, when you are fasting, when you are praying, God will begin to destroy, begin to destroy all your enemies, one after the other. God will begin to bring them down. God will begin to destroy their life. God will begin to overturn and overturn and overturn again. Our God is a faithful, our God is a just God. So let us go into Esther fasting and know why Esther was fasting. Esther called for fasting. Three days fasting, say, fast for me. If I die, I die. If I survive, I survive. That is how much Esther felt before he called his fasting because he know he's going in the lion den. She is going in the lion den. Because if she made a mistake, she is gone. She's gonna be hanged. So she called for fasting. Our God is a faithful God. Shall I will read Esther, please? Esther chapter 3 from verse 1 to 11. Our God is faithful. This is concerning Haman, Mordecai, Esther, King Ahasuerus, and Habana. <coughs> Haman was a henchman that hated the Jews. Mordecai was a Jewish man that loved the Jews. Esther was the, the queen of the king, who is she's a Jew as well. And Genahesaurus, he is the king. He gave the order. But a time comes when you know money, money can destroy life. Haman promised the king to give him more money than what, what he gained from his treasures. And then the king gave him his signet, his ring. And this is the man that hates the Jews. So he used that opportunity to destroy the Jews, to kill the Jews, to kill all the Jews. But it is only through the fasting and prayers of Mordecai and the fasting and prayer of the children of Israel and the fasting and prayer of Queen Esther that overturned and overturned and overturned again all the plot of Haman and the gallop which he made against the Jews and against Mordecai, he was put into that. It's like back to sender. And somebody shall remain. So the Bible says, after this thing did King Hazarus promoted Haman, the son of Hamantata. The, Ag the Agatite, the Agatite, and advanced him and set him seat above all the prince that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gates bowed and reverenced Haman. For the king has commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. So you don't mean to bow down to devil, 
All you need to do is to stop the devil. You don't need to bow down to money. All you need is to destroy the prince of money. That is the devil. So Mordecai did not bow down to Haman. Because Mordecai knew that Haman hates the Jews. And because Haman hates the Jews, he wants to destroy the Jews. And then he went and signed and sealed it with a king's signet to destroy the Jews, to kill all the Jews in a certain day. We are going to jump uh, 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 because of our time. And I would like us to read Esther chapter 4. Uh, I would like us to read Esther chapter. Uh, let's read that very 3, verse 11. Let's just read 3, 11. Let's read that verse 11. Only verse 11. So Haman was there to destroy the Jews. And verse 11 said, And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Because Haman gave the king money, gave the king treasure and money, gave them billions. And the king said, wow, what am I doing with the contribution of the Jews? Whatever, whoever you're talking of, I give you the authority. Do whatever that pleases you. And Haman writes a letter and put the, the king a signature in it to destroy all the Jews. But he did not know that that is something that is bigger that is better than the king's signature. And that is the power of fasting and prayer. And if we go to the same Esther chapter 4, from verse 1, please. From verse 1 to 17. Esther, please, when you go home, read this book of Esther. We're going to round up in a minute because of the time. So you read the book of Esther, and then you're going to get the very, very good uh, word of message from there. Esther chapter 7, from verse 1 to 10. Or from 1 to 17, yes, let's go. And our, the word of God says, When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his cloth and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud voice and with a bitter cry. Verse 2, and came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth and it. And in every province, whithersoever the king commanded and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and in ashes. Because Mordecai circulated a letter to all the Jews that they will be destroyed, they will be killed. And the Bible says, all the Jews, they turn to God, and they start to fast, they start to pray, they put on their ash, their, 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 their clothes, their dirty clothes. They didn't go and just hold their hands and wait till when they die. But they start to fast and pray. Brother, let me tell you, whatever you are going through today, fast and pray. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Fast and pray. God answers our prayer. Because the Bible says, if my people could have called by my name, if they can humble themselves and pray, if they can fast and pray, I will hear them from heaven. So if you can fast and pray, God will definitely hear you from heaven. He will show you mercy. Our God is a faithful God. So if we read Esther chapter 7, let us go to Esther chapter 7 from verse 1 as well. Please, when you go home, finish this Esther. It's a very good reading. Esther chapter 7 from verse 1 to 10. Our God is faithful. Esther chapter 7 from verse 1 to 10. And the Bible says, So the king and Haman come to banquet with Esther the queen. And the king said again unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? And it shall be performed even to the half of the kingdom. Then Esther, the queen, answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it pleases the king, let, me, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. This is when Esther have called it, tell the people to fast and pray for three days. Then he made a banquet for the queen, the, the king, and Haman. He requested for that. Verse 4. And we are sold. And I, 
I and my people to be destroyed, to be slain, and to punish. But if we had seen, if we have, if we have been sold for bond men and bond women, I had held my tongue altogether. The enemy could not contravail the king's damage. Verse five. Can you go up, please? Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he, and where is he that does presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, The adversary, the enemy, is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. Verse 7. And the king arose from the bucket of wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden, and Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen. For he saw that there was evil demand, that there was evil determined against him by the evil. Verse 8. Then the king returned out of the place garden into the place of the banquet of wine, and Haman was falling upon the bed where, whereon Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the, in the house? As the word went out of the king's mouth, they, they covered Haman's face. And Habona, one of the chamberlain, said unto the king, Behold also the gallow fitted, the gallow fitted fifty, fifty cubits, fifty cubit kahai, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who spoke good for the king. Standing in the house of Haman, the king said, Hang him there on. Hang him there. Can somebody shout amen? amen. He said, Hang him there. Can we say, can we of of us repeat it? Hang him there. Hang him there. This is how God will do to your enemy. Amen. Can somebody shout amen? amen? This is how God will do to your enemy. God will hang your enemy to the gallow that he makes for you. You're going to throw your enemy to the pit that you have digged for you. God is going to burn the enemy with the, with the fire that you, have, that you have kindled against you. So the king said, hang Haman there. And if we read down to Esther chapter 8, the Bible says, everything, all the wealth of Esther, all the wealth of Haman was given to Esther. And Esther bring uh, um, uh, uh, and Esther also give it to Mordecai to look after. So the the wealth of the hidden, the Bible says, the riches of the hidden, the wealth of the hidden will be transferred to you. And this will happen when you fast and pray. Can somebody shout amen? amen. This will happen when you do what? When you fast and pray. Your enemy will be put into your position, the position that he thought against you. Your enemy will put in that same position. If your enemy has thought to destroy you, to kill you, your enemy will be killed. If your enemy has thought to shoot you or to, uh, or to kill your, your family, your enemy family will be killed. Only when you fast and pray. That's what the word of God said. When you humble your soul with fasting and prayers, God will answer your prayer. Amen. And somebody shall remain. Amen. So know what you are fasting for. Be like Esther, be like Mordecai, be like the children of Israel that fasted and prayed. And then God is going to give you victory. And victory and victory. Remember the word of God says, I humble myself. I humble my soul. I humble my soul in fasting and prayer. You've got to humble your soul in fasting and prayer. When you fast, when you pray, your soul will be humble. Your body will be humble. Your spirit will be humble. Everything about you will be humble. And then you're going to have that opportunity to cry to God. You will not even sometimes lift up your face, but you're going to cry to God. And God will hear your prayer. Can we stand up right now in the name of Jesus? And that is one tough prayer we are going to pray. Today, we are going to destroy, we are going to break every causes against you. In any way that devil have caused you, or your parents have caused you, or your brother have caused you, or your friend has caused you, or your wife has caused you, or your husband has caused you, or whoever has caused you. Today, we're going to break all those causes. Can somebody shout amen? Because you are fasting and prayer, pray, God is going to hear our cry today. Therefore, you may not know who has caused you. I can assure you, your friend can cost you. When somebody says, it's not going to be good with you. You're not going you're not gonna to enjoy your family. You're not going to even get married. You're not going to even be rich. 
You know that even be in good health, you you will die in sickness. You will die in this. That's cost. It is cost. It is cost. Even sometimes our parents cost us, but we do not know. When you when your parents open up their mouth say it's not going to be well with you because you've done it because you've done that, it won't be well. With you. you think it is just a word. It's not a word. It is a cost. So today, in the name of Jesus, lift up your hands. We are going to break all those costs. Every cost, every cost in our life, in the life of our children, in the life of our brothers and sisters, in the life of our husband and wife, every cost that our friends, our brothers, our sisters, our parents, devil, principalities, powers, and even every cost we cost ourselves. Sometimes we cost ourselves. Sometimes when we are angry, we cost ourselves. Today, for every cost that we have proclaimed to ourselves, or every cost our brothers and our sisters have proclaimed to us, for every cost that our parents or God have cost us in any way, for every cost that the principles and powers and standing forces and demonic forces have cost us, for every cost that devil has cost us, for every plan of devil, every plan of the principles and powers, every plan of standing forces, Every plan of the wicked spirit, we're gonna call them the fire. Yes, I want you to rise up your voice now, begin to destroy them. Begin to destroy them. Begin to destroy them. Remember one of two. Remember them. If you don't remember them, use the word all causes. All causes. All causes in your life. All causes in the life of your children. All causes in your business. All causes in your education. All causes in your education, all causes in your business, all causes in your health, all causes in your father family, all causes in your life, all causes in the name of your children, all causes in everything you do, all causes in the place of work, all causes from your friends, all causes, all causes from your parents, from your forefathers, from your great forefathers, from your forefathers, every causes, every causes, wherever they come from, every causes. Wherever it comes from, today, in the name of Jesus, we break it, 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 in the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of us, our business doesn't move. Some of us, our health doesn't get better. Some of us, our children doesn't get better. Some of us, our education doesn't get better. Some of us, what we are doing doesn't move on. Some of us, we are not achieving what we want to achieve. Because somebody has cost us. Because our friend has cost us. Because their brother has cost us. Because our father has cost us. Because our mother has cost us. Because our children have cost us. Because we have cost ourselves. That is the power of Jesus. That is the power of Jesus. I decree. I decree. By the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. That for every cost. All cost. Every cost in our life, in our family, in the life of our children, in the life of our husband, in the life of our wife, in our business, in our work, in our health, every cost is on our way, every cost is around us in the name of Jesus. I consume them with a fire.
Thank you, Holy Spirit, for having answered our prayers. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As we humble our soul this week, Father, you will set us free. You will deliver us. You will bless us. You will set us free. You will break all our forces, all our forces. It is broken. It is broken. It is broken. It is broken. All forces is broken. All forces is broken. All forces is broken. In your life, in your family, in your business, in your health, in your way, in your studies, in your education, in whatever you do. In the name of